Number 51. Round each of the following numbers to two significant figures. And then we have A through F. So A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay. So now we're going to be focusing on rounding. Now, if you don't know your significant figures, go back to the last three questions, 48, 49, and 50. We go into depth. I think we did about 20 problems with just knowing how many sig figs there are. So we're going to just introduce the new rounding here. So for example, if I need to round a number, let's just say I wanted to round this number, 4, 0, 403, right? And I wanted to round it to two sig figs. What you're going to do is you always take the first two sig figs that are significant. So in this case, it would be the four and the zero. And then you have to look always at the next door neighbor to see if that number will be rounded up or down. Now, the rule is that if that number is a five or above, so five, six, seven, eight, and nine, you will round up. So you would turn, in this case, you would have turned the zero into a one. But if the number is four and below, so four, three, two, and one, you will keep the number the same. So keep the same. So since this number right here, the next one, that's not significant because we want two sig figs, is a three, it's not powerful enough to round up the zero. So it would just be four, zero. This zero stays the same, and this would go away. But we need a placeholder still, right? Because 403 is not the same as just saying 40, right? It's not close enough. So whenever we need a placeholder, what number do we use? We always use the number zero. So I'll put a zero here. Now in this case, I gave you guys a really hard one because if I look here, there, there's only one sig fig here because these would be classified as trailing zeros. So how do I make this number into two sig figs? You would have to put it into scientific notation. So the decimals assumed to be here I jump one, two, so it would be 4.0. And that's how I get the two sig figs times 10 to the second. So sometimes you're going to have to play along with it. I'm glad I did this uh, example with you guys to show you kind of like the hardest of the hard. So let's see for A 0 0.436. We have to round this to two sig figs. So we should know that this zero in the front is a leading zero, and leading zeros never count. So the two sig figs that I'm talking about is the four and the three. The next one will always tell you if you round this number up or down. Six is five and above, so you would round this, the three, to a four. So it would be 0 0.44, and I have two sig figs, so that would be the answer to A. B, 9.000. Okay, where are your two sig figs that you want to round to? Well, the 9 would be the first one, and this 0 would be the second one because this is a trailing zeros. And remember, trailing zeros, the ones that are in the back, are always significant only if you see a decimal. And the decimal is right here. But now the next one will tell you if you round that zero to a one or not. But zero is less than five, so it stays the same. So this would be just 9.0. And that's the answer to B. And there's your two sig figs. C, 27.2. Okay, where's your first two sig figs? Right here, the two and the seven. The next one will tell you if you have the power to round up or keep the same number. It's a 2, so it's not a 5 or above, so it has to stay exactly the same. So it would be 2 and a 7. 27. That's two sig figs. So that's the answer.
to see. Next one. 135. Well, the first two sig figs would be the 1 and the 3. This 5 would tell me if I can round. Now, here is the case in which it's 5 and above, so that would knock this 3 and make it a 4. So when you're doing this one, it would be a 1, and now it's a 4. But here, you need still a placeholder because the decimal technically is here. So I have to bring that down all the way over here, but something's missing here. So it's a zero, because placeholders are always zeros. Now the question is, do I keep this as 140 with the decimal, or do I remove it? I have to remove it. Oh, that was a big eraser. I have to remove it because if I had the decimal here, this zero would actually count for a sig fig, and we don't want that. We only want two sig figs. So I have to get rid of that decimal. And in this case, that zero does not count anymore. And there it would be. The one and the four are the only ones that count. So I'll just put that up here. 140 is the answer to D. Letter E, 1.497 times 10 to the negative three. Well, just like we know from before, the times 10 to the negative three has nothing to do with sig figs. So we are just going to drag that down. That doesn't change anything. But let's see now. I have a 1 and a 4. So those are my two sig figs. But let's see if the, ne the number next door will change this up or keep it the same. The 9 is greater than 5, so it would change the 4 to a 5. This would stay, and the 1 would come down. So if I could just pull this together, it would be 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3. There's your two sig figs, the 1 and the 5. That's the answer to E. And then F, 0 0.445. Well, this 0 is a leading 0, so it does not matter for sig figs. So my first two sig figs are the 4 and the 4. And the next one will tell you whether you round up or down. And the 5 is obviously 5 or greater, and 5 or greater, you always round up. So here, it would be 0 0.4, but that 4 changes to a 5. So 0 0.45 would be the answer to F. Ooh, that was an, that's an ugly decimal. Okay. So that's all the answers. I hope this helped you guys a lot. Let us know in the comments if this helped. And... If you like, please subscribe because we got tons more answers coming your way. You don't want to miss out. I will see you all in the next question. Have a great day, guys.